The scripture lesson is out of chapter 2 of Titus today. That's the third, uh, well, the first and second Timothy. Uh, Paul wrote it in prison. He wrote this as a kind of, it wasn't his final letter, but it was getting close to it to encourage Titus. He sent Titus off to the, this area to uh, pastor. It had been, uh, there had been some difficulties. It was kind of uh, disrupted. They really hadn't had much leadership. It was kind of out of order. Paul sent him to go there to uh, to be uh, to bring order, bring order to the uh, church. And we talked last week about the uh, greeting. He greets uh, the this letter is always talks about the fact that he's a bond servant. He usually talks the message about the fact he's an apostle of Jesus Christ. He always puts his credentials out so people know that he is uh, who he is. It's not something he manufactured up, it's something God uh, talked to him about and brought him into the kingdom. In this uh, next uh, little piece of scripture, he talks about the operation of the church. And basically, uh, uh, the, the issue of the church is to teach and preach the word of God. That's the purpose of the church, to teach and to preach the word of God. And what was happening, there was false teachers, and this is about every letter he writes to deal with false teachers. This is the same. There were false teachers that were coming in, and they were leading the people off astray. They were teaching other doctrines. And he, he starts, his, he says, for you, but as for you, speak the things which are fitting for sound doctrine. That some of the things that they were teaching were things that were taken off the doctrine that had been laid down by, by Paul, and so he tells them to teach the things that are sound doctrine. Uh, older men are to be temperate, uh, dignified, sensible, sound in faith, in love, in perseverance. Perseverance is endurance, but you keep on keeping on, the idea is. So it would be healthy teaching, serious-minded. So the men are to be the leaders, but there are to, to be people that are uh, temperate, dignified, sensible, sound in faith, in love, and in perseverance. In other words, it's something that when you start on the path, you stay on the path, you continue to go forward until it's time to go home. And then he talks about the older women. Uh, likewise, are to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossip, not enslaved to much wine, doing <coughs> what is good, that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sensible, pure, workers at home, kind, being subject to their own husbands, that the word that the word of God may not be dishonored. And it's kind of an interesting thing that Paul puts, picks out the women and the mothers, particularly and the idea is Mother's Day worked out good. Titus two came up on Mother's Day that worked out good. And uh, the idea is, and the, the reality is that the, the mothers have the greatest influence in most people's lives. It's the mother that. Uh, that gives guidance. It's the mother that teaches. The mother that calls things in. And my mom just wait till your dad gets home. So I said, dad is never really going to be the enforcer. But here it definitely, it, and again, encourage the young women. One of the things that the church, I believe, has become quite lax in is that older women not mentoring younger women. Not really searching out. Not searching out younger women and to give uh, advice, and to give counsel, and just to give encouragement. To be able to do that to the young women and to teach them to love their husbands, love their husbands. That might be a big mission, but really that's really what we're going to do as, as the, the uh, women. Love their husbands, to love their children, to love their children. When you look at uh, our world today, we see a lot of just real great dysfunction. Oftentimes, uh, the men and women don't love each other, they don't really do a real good job with their children. But again, this is what God's called us to do. Our home should be a representation of the community of Christ, and we should be we should be caring for one another in the family, and to be sensible. To be sensible, in other words, to do things that are, make sense. And so we see this as the responsibility, and to be pure. To be pure, there to be mothers are to be pure in order to be pure, to live their life out well, that dignifies God. And then to be workers at home, and some of us have we've kind of revised that over the years, and many of the wives work out of, out of the home, but again, to, to, to still care for the home, to, to nurture those that are in the home, and then to be kind, and then to uh, 
being subject to their own husbands, uh, that the word of God may not be dishonored. And the picture there is that people, other members of the church, are not, they're not subject to other, other men, they're subject to their husbands. That's the idea there. So again, we see uh, this idea of, of mentoring uh, younger women. One of the things that some of our Bible studies we talked about this is that many of the women in our classes are made in the church that have single parents. Uh, had to raise their children to a baby. Maybe then they met a new uh, husband and remarried and things have gotten to be much better. But one of the things that, that they say is that it was difficult, it wasn't always easy, it was always kind of a struggle. And, and yet, now is our time to be able to, as the older women, to be people that mentor people that have gone through the struggles of, of a divorce, the struggles of death, the time to raise children. What a great opportunity for the church to step up and to, to deal with these young women that are deep, deep having difficulties or struggles. And, and so it's a really a challenge to see uh, that that's an opportunity. That's an opportunity for us to have a ministry within the church to reach out and touch others. It doesn't have to be a planned program. It can just be that you begin to sense that God's calling you to minister to some young person's life. And it even could be an older person. And then likewise, in verse 6, uh, urge the young men to be sensible. That's the young men to be sensible. In all things, show yourself to be an example of good deeds, with purity, and doctrine, dignified, sound in speech, which is beyond reproach, in order that the opponent uh, may be put to shame, having nothing bad to say about us. We should be living our lives in a way that brings glory to Christ, that people don't have something bad to say about us. Men in particular, he's talking about here, he's talking to Titus specifically, but also to both, husbands and wives, men and women, that we live a life that brings glory to God. And so that we have a surrendered life that we care for. Uh, and then he talks to the urge the bond slaves to be subject to their own masters in everything, to be well-pleasing, not argumentative, not pilfering, but showing all good faith, that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in every respect. And so, here at the bond slave is people, that when we work for people, it's about the employer-employee relationship, it's that we subject to our own masters, we, that's who we're responding to, that's who we care for, and uh, then, that, and to be well-pleasing. In other words, do a good job. Do a good job. I've told my kids over the years and others that I've encountered that if you uh, want to get to be the boss, all you got to do is show up on time, maybe stay a little bit late now and then, and just keep coming every day. Pretty soon all the other people who you left, you'll be in charge. <laughs> <laughs> really, I mean, really, if you think about it, that's, it's, you got to get up, you know something besides it. So many people are late, so many people don't come, or they call off every, every three days. So we just need to be faithful. We need to be faithful to show up. And then in everything, uh, be well pleasing, not argumentative. Uh, I've had people work for me that uh, knew a lot more than I did. I tried to be, uh, I tried to deal with that but when they wanted to argue, but there's a time to not argue. I've been married a long time, some of you have been married a long time. There's a time to argue, and there's a time to go, oh, you're right here, and just walk away. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Doesn't mean you have to agree with it, just walk away. <laughs> not go, but don't steal. Um, I, uh, I've talked about this before in another church, and one of the ladies worked for the post office said, Oh my gracious, I've got a post office pen in my pocket. She was at church. I heard take that back. I got George's pen here, so that's okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not, but showing all good faith that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in every respect. We need to live our life out in a way that shows in live, living color the doctrine of God of peace, love, joy. Patience, gentleness, that whole thing. So we need to be people that live that way as we bring glory to God in our daily living. The truth is, people will notice that. I mean, I, uh, I don't know why. If you really begin to practice that, it's amazing. People will begin to notice that you're living in a peculiar way. And so it's really a chance for us to live, live that out in Christ. And then in verse 11 it says, For by the grace of God... For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. The grace of God is Christ. He appeared, and, and it, in a, he brought salvation. 
That doesn't mean universal salvation, but it's available to all mankind, is the idea. It's not that everybody's going to be saved, it's that it's available for everybody. Instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age. And again, we need to be people that are, are not living in a way that brings dishonor to Christ. We need to live our lives that reflects the goodness of God into the world. Looking for the blessed hope. That's us. We're looking for the blessed hope. And the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our anticipation is not that we get a bigger TV. It's not that we get a bigger car. It's not that we get more stuff. It's that the, the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's our hope. That's where it is. It's not in all this other stuff that we try to accumulate. Who gave himself, here's what he did for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good works. He's redeemed us so that we can become part of the bride of Christ that the church has taken up and will come back. At the second advent, he will come back with him and help set up the kingdom of God. That's what God's calling you and me to do. He's calling us to live out that life. Uh, and so we are released by our relationship with God from the bondage of every sin that confronts us. We need to be people that believe and live, live in that life. Because these things are the things that will make for us and for our family and our neighborhood and our neighbors and the community things that will bring glory to God and will change the culture, change the atmosphere that's there. And then in verse 15 he says, These things speak and exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one disregard you. We need to be people that stand on the Word of God and stand with God in the places that we are. We need to be people that live our life out in a godly manner. One of the things that we have to presuppose in that whole thing is that we would know Christ as Savior. We have to confess that. Then we have to take time to study this so that we would know how to live. If you want to know how to live as a Christian, go ask a non-Christian. They'll tell you all the stuff. <laughs> we, we need to know the Bible so that we can live our life out bringing glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. He's given us the instructions. He's given us the plan. And we need to have an we need to take the opportunity in our lives to discern it and to live it and to play it out in our life in our life. What a great opportunity for us. What a great opportunity for us today. It's never been a better opportunity in the world than right now to share the gospel. There's all kinds of stuff going on and there's been great revivals over the years, but there's never been a greater time or a greater need for the gospel of Jesus Christ to be proclaimed into our world. And not only proclaim, but live, but live into our world. What a great opportunity we have. As we think about Mother's Day, we think about what our mothers have done for us. Uh, I, I want to sing a song, but I'm not going to get her. This is a song I learned when I was just a little kid. I'll just recite it. And it's for the million things she did. O means only. T is for the... H is for E is for her eyes and R put them all together they spell the name that means the world to me in most of our cases not everyone I suppose but if we live out the unconditional love that our mothers had for us it would be amazing of what it would do to our lives, our family lives, and our community's lives. Thank you. Father, we thank you, we praise you, and honor you for who you are. We thank you for the blessings that you've given us. We thank you, Father, that we're able to come and just rejoice in you. And we thank you, too, that you've given the instruction, instruction for, for, for us to be able to live our life uh, day by day and moment by moment to glorify you. And help us, Father, be surrendered to have an attitude of love and peace and grace uh, empowered by the Holy Spirit in our lives. So we just give you the praise and honor and glory. And we thank you so much and so we're deeply from mothers. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
We're going to send him to He is uh, he is an adult. Let me get down the water. Uh, uh, we have a gift for every lady that's here, every woman. Uh, I used to just do mothers, but I like to do it every way, so it's kind of like everybody sports everybody gets the trophy. <laughs> Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Have a great day.